Welcome to the Fane of Fantasy. I might be threading a little bit dangerous ground today uh, in trying to define fantasy shop genres, but uh, I already begun this playlist, so uh, I guess there is no point in turning back now. I initially wanted to talk about what defines epic fantasy, but I honestly think that it's better to touch upon high fantasy as well. Now, there are many discussions on the differences between epic fantasy and high fantasy, and many also conclude them to be one and the same. Now, while I can agree that high fantasy is perhaps not a term widely used today, and perhaps it has to some extent grown into being included in epic fantasy, I'm however not completely sold on the idea of the two being one and the same. So today I will give you my attempt on clarifying this whole thing. Stay tuned. Defining fantasy sub-genres can be a time sink where one can really geek out. If, if that's you, then that's cool, and uh, feel free to add your own thoughts uh, in the comment field below. However, I also need to keep this video viewer-friendly, so I'm coming at the topic from an angle of simplicity and with the belief that most topics can be argued uh, one way or the other. I'm here to bring clarity based on what makes sense to me. So uh, please take this video for what it is and not as an attempt for me to uh, wade into a heavy debated uh, argument with uh, any genre champions out there. So if you're good with that premise, then uh, let's dive in. First, we will cover what epic fantasy is, followed by defining high fantasy and in the end, we will look at where they might be the same and where they might not be the same. So epic fantasy first. Stories in the epic fantasy genre tends to be of a grand scale, where armies are involved in battles sweeping across the landscape, or a dark evil threatening the story world as a whole. No matter what, the stakes are global and we experience it via multiple character viewpoints. Often these books will be more than 100,000 words and they will deal with, the, with this huge scope. But let, let's keep it simple with a set of defining aspects. One, it's a story world in a secondary setting or an imaginary sec setting. Two, it has a large cast of characters. Three, there are subplots which will help advance the story where there is a complex overall plot that are almost impossible to resolve for the uh, main characters. And four, we are talking about saving the world or even the universe, but as a minimum, the fate of a couple of nations hangs in the balance uh, I don't think one nation is enough for it to be an epic fantasy. Examples of epic, epic fantasy works are Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, and uh, George R. R. Martin's uh, A Song of Fire and Ice. As I covered in another video, uh, I'll, I'll place a link somewhere here on the screen, uh, but Game of Thrones is fantasy. And if we are to assign a subgenre to it, it would be epic fantasy. You have the medieval setting, you have the huge cast with many intricate subplots which are woven into a complex whole. Then there is high fantasy. Here we tend to focus more on the setting and the chains and, uh, and choices made by the protagonist while Epic fantasy is more centered in the scale of conflict that affects the world as a whole. 
we usually find a smaller cast of characters compared to the epic fantasy and they are often focused on the journey of the hero through a fantastical landscape. In essence, the more removed the story world is from the real world as we know it, the more likely it is that the story would be called high fantasy. For clarity purposes, the opposite cl classification is low fantasy, which is set in a more earth-oriented or recognizable setting to, to us as humans. If we again want to keep it simple, let's set some defining elements. One, the story's world must be a secondary world or an imaginary setting created by the writer. Two, it will have magic either with a system of rules, which we would define as hard magic, or it's a more mysterious presence of magic, which we define as soft magic. We find invented languages either included in the text or implied in the narrative prose of the work. And four, there is other races as for example elves. Five, it has mythological creatures as well, like dragons for example, my personal favorite as you know. So if I had to mention a few examples of high fantasy works are C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia or Patrick Rothfuss' uh, King Killer Chronicles, for example. So with all that said, there seems to be a point here to be made uh, to whether a story can be both epic fantasy and high fantasy. And honestly, I don't see why that's not possible. In fact, I would, I'll go on, out on a limb here and say we could reclassify Lord of the Rings to be an epic high fantasy. What do you think about that? We have a secondary world. We have magic, we have numerous fictional species, we have creatures uh, together with invented languages. So what do you think? The world at last is at, at risk and we uh, make use of multiple character viewpoints. I think that's a pretty good list. I really hope this explanation gives some clarity to how these two genres include elements of each other and therefore it's, it's easy to see why people believe them to be one and the same. To a large degree, they are very much the same. They have the same care and detail that goes into the world building for an epic fantasy setting. Uh, those will usually also appear in a high fantasy setting. We're dealing with secondary worlds filled with a riot of fantasy races. And in both cases, the settings are mostly based on the medieval period. But I also mentioned in the beginning of the video that I am not completely convinced to the fact that these two subgenres should be the same. Now, the thing is that epic fantasy takes the high fantasy elements and ramps up the magnitude of the story and, and puts the world in peril. While epic fantasy also dwells in a secondary world or an imaginary setting, it is not bound to use a medieval setting or even magic. Now, this is where I imagine that disagreements can arise. Especially if you look at the previous mentioned video I created on Game of Thrones. Since in, in that video, I define some rules on what fantasy is. And within those rules, magic was one. And here I am saying that epic fantasy does not necessarily have to have magic in it. So how does that work? Well, well, if we take Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn trilogy, that is epic fantasy. And while it has the medieval setting, it has no magic, so to speak. Instead, we are giving abilities or powers. And there are no fantastical creatures in there, at least not like those we are used to see. Or take George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. That is also epic fantasy and though it has dragons in it and even giants, uh, 
you will not find very many high fantasy components within that story. They're kind of toned down around a host of characters in a dark medieval setting, but still very much fantasy in, in many ways. That, does that make sense to you? I, I really hope that it does. <laughs> Whether you agree or not might be a different matter, and, and that's okay. But I hope you at least see why I started out by saying that I don't believe these two subgenres to be exactly the same. Uh, high fantasy can be epic fantasy, and epic fantasy does not necessarily have to have all the elements that makes up high fantasy included. If I apply this line of thinking to my own Keystone Bone trilogy, I would also say that it falls somewhere in between these two subgenres. It, it carries elements of both in it, really. If you name some of your favorite fantasy shop genres in the comments section below, I will put them on my to-do list and then I will cover those in future videos. I would like to, over time, that we build a solid playlist here explaining the different uh, subgenres. And if you have some viewpoints that differ from mine, then by all means add those to the comment section as well. I really hope that this uh, video was helpful and if you liked the video then uh, hit up the like button. If you subscribe you will uh, get new videos every Monday and uh, if you're interested head on over to Patreon and uh, check out the rewards program I've set up over there. It will cost you less than a cup of coffee a month. Now all there is left to say is all the best to you and uh, thanks for watching.